Church said amen. Y'all thank God for them. I also thank God, amen, for my sister Kayla. She's the one who choreographed it and everything. So y'all thank God. Amen. Well, God is good, y'all. He is a healer. How many of y'all know that he is a healer? Amen. And so we thank God that by his stripes we are healed. Amen. Well, listen, amen. This next pastor, this next preacher is no stranger to us as well. Amen. Uh, he's at home and we thank God uh, for him. Amen. He can preach. He can sing. He can do it all, y'all. Amen. Amen. He's an awesome man of God. I, I, I'm so encouraged because he, uh, he often posts very encouraging uh, messages on Facebook. Amen. And so um, if you're not his friend on Facebook, you need to follow him. Amen. Amen. I'm talking about, amen, the pastor of the Mount Canaan Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. None other than our brother and our friend, Pastor Tony Avery. Amen. Will y'all receive him at this time? Come on, y'all. Let's receive him as he comes at this time. Amen. Give God a hand of praise in here today. First of all, I do, I know protocol has already been established. I want to thank God for Pastor Johnson and also to Pastor Story for this opportunity. And last but not least, I thank God for my wife for being here today. After pondering and praying about this message uh, today, uh, I said, Lord, we need a word going into 2019. And, and Story you in my spirit um, this message is especially for you on today for you on today review what you've gone through in 2018 there's a word today there's a word today out of the book of Luke chapter 22 verse 31 by saying amen. <coughs> this is the word of God for people of God. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brother. May God bless every hearer, reader, and doer of his holy word. Father, we thank you again for this opportunity that you've allowed me to stand. Thank you for the first day of this year that you've allowed me to proclaim your word. Lord, we thank you for all of the brethren who have brought forth the word in due season. Now, Lord, we ask that you would embrace somebody with your word on today that's going to help catapult them into 2019, 2019. Lord, we thank you. We give you honor and glory. In the name of Jesus, we do humbly pray. I want to talk about today Sifted saints. Sifted saints. My brothers and sisters, God had a desire to make and mold us into what he desires us to be and to do. What God does is he uses trials and tribulations during this process of sifting. 
as saints of God, not all of our circumstances, not all of our situations that will happen to us in life will be good. You're going to have some good days and you're going to have some bad days. But when you put them all on the scale, all of your good days will suddenly outweigh your bad days. Can I get some help in here today? We're going to have some good days. We're going to have some bad days. But but here's, here's the truth of the matter. We can make it if you just hold on to God's unchanging hand. Here it is. The truth of the matter is this. All of us are going to go through some kind of a sifter. Whether you believe it or not, uh, whether you're a deacon or preacher, you're going to go through some kind of a sifter. You're not excluded. So here, here we are. And I ain't going to need all that time. I'm telling you, I'm gonna, not going to need all that time. Here it is in the text, in this particular text. It is Jesus who gives Simon Peter a stern warning. About what? That he and not, and when you see this word you, that don't only apply to Simon, but it applies to all of the disciples that were there with him. So hear what I'm trying to say. Just because you're a preacher, just because you're on the praise team, just because you're on the shepherd's care, you are not eliminated from being sifted. And what Jesus does, and, 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 and I don't know about y'all, but, but Jesse Perry used to call me. She used to say, Tony, and, and if I didn't hear her the first time she called me, she would call me again. Guess what it was me? It was to get my attention. And all Jesus is doing in this text, trying to get his attention, to let him know that what you're about to go through, it ain't no cakewalk. But it's real. Look at who Peter was. One of the, the, the followers of Jesus. I said that to tell you I don't care how good you pray, how good of a relationship you got with God, but somewhere along the line, if you hold on a little bit longer, you're going to be sifted. Can I tell you this? Satan don't care what kind of relationship you got with God. How do you know? If he bothered Job, guess what? He'll bother you. If he bothered God's only begotten son, when he was led into the wilderness to be tempted, who ain't no better. So, so here it is. Here it is. Pastors and preachers, we are all going to go through the sifter. Coleman, you just got to Bethel, but I guarantee you, lay on down the road, you're going to go through the sifter. And listen, yes, sir. Listen, here's the reality of the text. My pastor said, You got to walk the text, you got to deal with the text. You got to deal with the text. Yeah. The first thing that Jesus points out yeah. is Satan is real. Yeah. Yes, sir. He ain't nothing to play with. He ain't, listen, we've been told this myth for several years that he got long horns and forked tail and got big, big red eyes. And I won't get nasty snot coming all out of his nose. But that ain't Satan. He's real. And ain't no need you think you can fight him fighting a physical battle because the Bible said that he is spiritual. The reason I can tell you he's real today, Stiggers, because Jesus calls him Satan. 
And then he calls him a he. And as I move to the text, the Bible says that not only did Jesus call him Satan, but Jesus says that what he was a he, not only did Jesus call him Satan and said that he was a he, he said that Satan has some of our quality. He has a desire to sift us. Don't you think that Satan ain't looking at you the moment that you accepted Jesus Christ into your life? A big bull's eye was painted on your back. He got you under the microscope. When you work and you think he ain't looking at you, guess what? He's looking at you. Got GPS to your house. GPS to your church. But, but here, here, here's, here's something very important. Jesus says that Satan has desired to sift you. Now, in this desire, as I read the text and as I studied the text, the desire wasn't just a desire. The, the, the desire was a request to God to have Simon. And I'm trying to help somebody here today. Listen, before Satan can have you, he got to get God's permission. Can I get some help in here today? So, so, so here it is. And somebody don't believe that, that he has to have your permission. Here it is. The Bible says when, 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 when Satan and God came together so in the book of Job, the Bible says that Satan says to him, does Job serve you because of all the things that you have given him? Does Job serve you simply because you've been blessing him with all? of the cattle, all of his servants, all of his children. But I discovered something about Job after all that he had went through, going through the sifter. Two things that he didn't lose. <laughs> he didn't lose his mind. He didn't lose his faith. And most of all, he stayed with God. So here, here it is. Satan don't care. Listen, he'll use any opportunity that he can to sift you. He'll use any situation to damper your faith in Jesus. He wants us to doubt the Lord. And this is what I discovered, Pastor Stiggers. If he can destroy our faith, he automatically wins the battle then there goes your trust. There goes your hope. There goes your dreams. But I discovered something. A sifter has a purpose. Here's what I discovered. The sifter can bring out the good I wish I had a praying church, praying church in here. And the sifter can bring out the bad. I'm about ready to leave. But 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 listen, my grandmother, when she would walk through the kitchen, when she got ready to, 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 to bake a cake, this is what she would do. She would get out the Martha White plain flour and she would pour it into this contraction called a sifter and she would begin to turn listen the screen ain't nothing but your faith in that sifter she would begin to turn that handle and as she turned the handle we begin to see fine flour flow to the outside on the inside of the bowl but what you did not recognize was on the inside of the sifter was some lumps I didn't see it at first, but where she began to turn and yearn, there come the lumps on the outside. I stopped by to tell somebody, there's some good in the best of you, worst of you. There's some bad in the best of you. Here it is. In order to go through the sifter, we got to get rid of some things. We got to get rid of some folk. Everybody that's on your front row ain't designed to be on your front row. 
Some of them need to be in the basement. Finally, what Jesus said. Understand about Jesus, and we gotta use the same characteristics as Jesus. Listen, you can't wait until you get in the middle of your situation. You gotta learn stop being reactive, and you gotta be pre proactive. <laughs> That's the problem with the boys on the boat that day. Yeah, Jesus sleeping in the boat. All of a sudden, a storm comes up, and now they want to call on the name of Jesus. Where you been all this time? But I stopped by. On my way back to Pinecrest to tell somebody story 2018 has been a year of sifting for you. But in 2019 you gonna find out that you made it through the storm. You made it through the rain. After a while, you gonna be able to say, I made it, I made it, I made it. Bless you. Bless you. tell you what he just told me. Because I think it needs to be heard. He said, man, all them times you and your wife, y'all went to Birmingham in 2018. I was praying for you. You were just going through a sift. This is what he just messed me up at, Pastor. Because I just had this conversation with Pastor. This is what he just messed me up. He don't even know it. He said, but your name ain't stolen for nothing. Let, let, let me tell you, let me tell you how he messed me up. Y'all, I just, Pastor, I just watched Creed too. I'm glad that I watched it by myself, Coleman. But I watched Creed 2 by myself. And Creed 2, at the end of Creed 2, after he was fighting his daddies, the one who defeated his daddy, he was fighting the son. He was fighting the son. And Creed had been knocked down two or three times. The last time that he was knocked down, Pastor Avery, he looked at his mom. His mama said, get up. He 
looked at his girl. His girl said, get up. He looked at Rocky, his mentor. His mentor said, get up. But now this was, it's messed me up, y'all. After he hit the campus about three or four times, he jumped up. And when he jumped up, the referee checked his gloves, looked him in the face, so stickers, and said, what's your name? Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. I'm going to try it one more time. I'm going to try it one more time. I said, the referee checked his glove, Pastor. Looked him in the face and said, what's your name? Y'all still missed it. Let me give it to you where you can understand it. If you don't know who you are, you'll never jump back in the ring and fight this enemy. But Pastor just told me that my name is Story. So I must tell the story of how God's been good to me. And I wonder, is it anybody here that you can lift your hands and say, God has been good. What's your name? What's your name? You are a conqueror. What's your name? You are more than a conqueror. What's your name? You are the head and not the tail. What's your name? You can win. B-I-C-T. 